learn what the, and get a uh, get a lesson from everybody in the Bible. Now it could be one character or another, it could be Caleb, it could be Joshua, or somebody. But we'll learn not only are, are we learning uh, a little bit of their character, but we're also learning about the, about the the people in the Bible and what they did and so on. So at least when somebody says something, you know that, who they're talking about. When I was a young Christian, I had no idea who they were talking about. Sometimes you know, they would say Jezebel. I had no idea what they meant. You know. And then as I read my Bible and found out who Jezebel, then I understood more or less who Jezebel was. So it's going to give us a hand. Now right now, I'm going to give you a story about what they teach on this. Then we're going to read it. And then I'm going to break it down for you. Are you Okay, now listen carefully to what I'm going to say. Because I want you to, 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 to remember this as we're teaching this. There's a teaching that a lot, of, a lot of Baptists and a lot of Pentecostals and a lot of everybody teaches now. And it's not in the Bible, but they teach it. And here's what, here's what they teach. They teach that uh, there was a time uh, when the angels of God used to roam the earth. They were called the sons of God in the Old Testament. And so these, uh, these uh, uh, angels dwelt on the earth and this is that the, the, the Bible says that the, that the men, men, uh, that men uh, begin to multiply, they bear to them daughters. And the angels of God, or the sons of God, they're called in the scripture. The sons of God saw these beautiful women, and they took them uh, women for wives. Now understand, the angels took women for wives. We're going to see if that's true in the Bible. And so after they took them uh, wives... They had sex with these women, and once that they had, uh, uh, once that they had uh, produced children, they produced giants in the land. And those great giants went on to be destructive and so on, so God decided to destroy the land to get rid of the giants. Now you got the story, right? Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. That, that, that's the story that they tell you. And they, you, this is their main verse right here that I'm, we're going to use today. Genesis 6. Now look at, let's begin studying it. And as we begin here, I want you to notice what it says. I'm going to read all the verses that I want to read. I want you to read along. And, and you'll see how they can jip you or how they can manipulate the scripture. Notice what it says. It says, And it came to pass that men uh, began to multiply it in the face of the earth, or, excuse me, on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Now they tell you the sons of God were angels, that they were fair. And they took uh, them wives of all, which, uh, of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for, the, excuse me, for that he also is flesh, yet, <clears throat> yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the earth in those days, all, uh, in those days, and also uh, after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty uh, men, and were, were of old men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man that it was great on, in the earth, and excuse me, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the face of the, uh, excuse me, made man on the earth, and it grieved him, grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Uh, notice who he's going to destroy. Man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beasts and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it, for it repented me that, for it repented me that I have made men. Now, <clears throat> the Bible goes on to say this. But Noah found grace in his eyes. Now, we're not going to teach about Noah. I think most of us know his story, so we're not going to go into that. But Noah found grace in his eyes. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a, a just man and perfect uh, in his generation, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat sons, Shem, Ham, and that guy right there. Thank you. <laughs> then... Uh, uh, Excuse me. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh 
had corrupted, uh, had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come, uh, is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them from the, uh, with the earth. Now we'll stop right there. Now I want you to notice, let's go back again. We're going to start again. In verse 2 it says that they have, of course, in verse 1 they have daughters and so on. And in verse 2 it says um, that, the sons of, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took wives. And of all that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for, all, for the, he, he also is flesh. Now notice the word flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now God was going to destroy the earth. Most of us remember the story of Noah. That's how long he preached, a hundred and twenty years, and then God destroyed the, the earth. So let's continue. And there were giants. Now watch this. They took them wives, and there were giants in the day in, in, the, in the earth in those days. And also, after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, that they bare children. And they were uh, the same, became mighty men, and uh, uh, men uh, which were of old, uh, old men of renown. And let's stop right there. So I can say this to you. You see what happened? Well, these angels saw these women, and they had sex with them, and out of that came the giants. And you would read that, and if you're not paying attention, you're going to say, Oh, that's what it says. But that's not what it says. Amen. you got to learn to read. Amen. And the problem is that you have to go actually to some Christian college to learn that nonsense. Because the old time preachers didn't preach that. Amen. So where did it come from? It came from somebody who was educated too much. He got educated beyond the Bible. All right. Let's consider uh, what we're going to teach here real quickly. First of all, the word men, I think it's found like seven times in here. And then you'll notice that at least three times he says flesh, uh, and then again the end of all flesh has come. Notice the word flesh, and notice the word men, because we, it's telling you who he's going to destroy. Men. Not angels, but men. Now, they use the term sons of God to say, well, see, there it is, the sons of God. The sons of God were uh, angels. Well, let's consider if the Bible really teaches that the sons of God are angels. Does the Bible really say that? Well, let's remember that if we look at the scriptures, uh, let's, let's look at a few, uh, just, a, just a few real quickly to, to kind of nail this down and find out who the sons of God are. First of all, I want you to notice with me, let's go, I think it's Hebrews chapter 1. Let's try there. Don't lose this. It's going to be back and forth, back and forth. Hebrews chapter 1. Now, he says that the sons of God were the, were the angels, all right? So let's see if the Bible says what the... Bible says, in the angels are the sons of God. And, then, and we're going to do a little study here, so bear with me. Now, this won't be finished today. Maybe take me till next week to finish it, but we'll finish it sometime next week or so, right? Uh, next next session or so. Now, it says here, and I want you to notice here, <clears throat> if you're there in verse... Uh, uh, actually, let's start with... Uh, with well, then let's just read verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 5. That'll kind of help us a little bit. Uh, well, no, never mind. Verse 4. All right, he says, being made, referring to Jesus, being made so much better than the angels, for he has uh, by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now watch carefully the, the, the wording here. For under which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son? When has God called an angel son? The answer is never. Amen. But unto the son, now watch what he says, Unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Again I will be unto him a father, he shall be unto me a son. He's never said that to the angel. He never said to an angel, you're my son, I'm going to be your father and you're going to be my son. He never says that to an angel. Amen. Amen? Amen. So now consider who were these sons of God that the Bible speaks of. They were actual men who were serving the Lord. That's, who they, that's all it is. It's actual men who are serving God, and they saw the, the, the women. Now, we, the reason it became wrong is because they were unsaved women. You get it now? They were unsaved women. They ran around with a bunch of unsaved women. And what happens when you begin to produce children, guess what? They're going to be cursed. 
And they became men of renown, men, uh, men that were men of renown. Let's, let's continue on here real quickly, all right? So who, who, is, uh, who are the sons of God? And let's consider for just a minute what the Bible says. Let's go to, if you would, John chapter 1. Again, don't, go, don't lose Genesis. John chapter 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. And we'll read just a few verses here, or one verse here, and then we'll go through a few others, all right? Uh, who are the sons of God? Were the angels ever born again? No. Nope. Now, the Bible doesn't say they were ever born again. But again, you have to really squeeze it out of there. And, I'll, uh, and honestly, when we finish, you're going to see that, that I was right on this subject. He says, now, the Bible says in verse 12, chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received, received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Those that have been born again or have received the Lord, those become the sons of God. Amen. You have to become his son by receiving Christ because we're lost. The angels that are in heaven are not lost. Amen? Amen. So it wasn't the sons of God that were out having sex with women. Angels, it was men. Now let's, con let's continue on this just a little bit more. Let's look at chapter uh, 1 John, not, not, not just John, but 1 John chapter uh, 3. I guess what we'll, we'll, we'll look at. 1 John chapter 3. And then we'll look at one more verse and then we'll go back to to what I want to speak on, uh, or to the rest of the scripture there. First John chapter 3. All right. It says here, in verse 1, it says, Behold uh, what manner of, of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called what? Sons. sons of God. We are called the sons of God. So saved people are the sons of God, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when, we, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So those that are born again, those that are going to be in the resurrection, are called sons of God. Amen. But you cannot find a scripture anywhere that says the angels are the sons of God. You're not going to find that anywhere. All right, so let's continue here. Let's go back to 6, chapter 6. I can go on on this. Like I said, I was going to go to Galatians, actually. You might want to write this down, Galatians 4, 6, just in case you want to look it up uh, later on, all right? Now, I want you to notice something here. The Bible, and I think I, I, think I kind of messed up there. Let me, let me check for sure. You stay right where you're at. I might, I might have to get you back to Hebrews. I, 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 let, me, let me make sure, because I want to make a statement here that I think is very important, all right? There goes my outline. Now I'm not going to be able to preach. All right, now, if you're there, I said earlier, let me see. Uh, all right, now I'm going to have to pick up my outline because I think I lost the, the thought I had here. If I can find it now. All right, now, remember that we're talking about uh, in Hebrews chapter chapter 1. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 1. I'm going to have to show you something there. Now, remember to which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son. Well, to none of them because they're not. But there's something that it does say in Hebrews chapter 1. Look at verse 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels, what are the angels? Spirits. spirits. Thank you. All right. He makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. All right. He says the same thing in verse 14. He says, are they not all ministers, uh, ministering spirits sent forth to minister uh, of them that shall inherit uh, salvation? So the angels... Our ministry spirits, all right, here to minister to us. That's why we say, uh, you know, the angels watch over you, whatever. Yeah, they're ministering spirits to watch over us. Now, I wanted to bring that point up because the angels are not flesh. Amen. The end of all flesh has come. Didn't he say that? Amen. The angels are not flesh. As a matter of fact, let's go over to John. Am I right? No, Luke chapter 24. The angels are not flesh. Luke chapter 24. You don't want to miss this one because this is a good one to use when they're trying to tell you that those are that the angels, that the angels are the ones that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, that are spoken of in Genesis chapter six. Now in Luke chapter 24, and if you look with me in verse 39, look at what Jesus says when he appears unto the disciples. He says to them, "Behold my hands and my feet." He said, "It is I myself. Handle me." And see, for I see, for a spirit has not flesh and bone as you see me have. 
Does that nail it down for you? So in the, wait a minute. The Bible says that the angels are ministering spirits. Amen? Amen? They're spirits is what the Bible says. Now it also tells you that the, the, in Genesis chapter 6 that those that were there were flesh. And the flesh is what was going to be destroyed. The end of all flesh has come. So they could not have been ministering spirit. They could not have been angels because they were made of flesh. Jesus never made, excuse me, God never mentioned the angels when he was talking to us in Genesis chapter 6. Now back to Genesis chapter 6. Another point I want to bring to you, again, they were not the sons of God. As a matter of fact, let, let me give you a, a, a quick scripture that you want to write down somewhere, and I'll tell you why it's important. For example, in the book of Job, in the book of Job, the Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says that uh, the sons of God came to present themselves before God. Here's what they'll tell you, that it was angels that went to present themselves before God. No, the sons of God. Amen. We come to present ourselves before God here. Amen. Did you know that? All right, watch it. They, they, so here's what they'll tell you. In the book of Job, it uses the word sons of God. But if you get the NIV Bible, which is a corrupt Bible, the best-selling Bible, but one of the worst Bibles you can have, but the NIV Bible changed the sons of God, took that off, and put angels. Now, if you read it and then go down to the bottom, it'll say Hebrew, or in the Hebrew, it says sons of God. So why don't you just put what the Hebrew says? Amen. You know what I mean? In the, no, in the footnotes, it says, well, the sons of, they were the sons of God. But they took that off and put angels. Now, they say, well, because the devil was there and the devil's an angel and he was right there with him when they went, uh, when those angels went to present themselves before God. Has nothing to do with that. Amen. I'm, I'm going to prove that to you. Has nothing to do with that. Now, I, I don't, uh, I know that if I did all of these, it would take us a while. But in the book of Zechariah, you don't need to go there, but we, again, write some of these down because you're going to need them someday. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, here's what happens. The Bible says that then the Lord, when the writer says, then the Lord showed me the priest, that he stood by the angel of the Lord there in the temple. He says he stood by the angel of the Lord. The priest is worshiping before the angel of the Lord. He said, yet I saw Satan in his right hand ready, uh, ready to, to stop him. So the, the devil was in the congregation, wasn't he? So when, when the priest was praying to the, to, the, to the Lord, all of a sudden the a devil shows up and the, door, the Lord rebukes him. In the congregation, by the way, the devil does appear in our congregation too, amen? amen. If we're not careful, he will use us, and he's the devil in the congregation. Now, remember another story real quickly. Remember in the, uh, uh, he appeared when Job was there, the, the, the devil appeared. In Job 1 6, as I mentioned, in the book of Jude, uh, excuse me here, in the book of John, chapter 16 to chapter 13, verse 26 and 27, we find that Judas had just finished uh, having the Lord's Supper. And the Bible says, and when supper was ended, the devil put into Judas, or the devil entered into Judas, that he would deceive the Lord. After the supper was ended, you mean when they were in fellowship with the Lord? Yep. The devil showed up. Amen? Amen. So it's no difference that the devil showing up uh, in Genesis chapter 6 with Job. And then can I say another one real quickly? You remember Ananias and Sapphira? Mm -hmm. They deceived, they tried to deceive the Lord and tried to deceive uh, Peter, the congregation. And the Bible says, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Satan was in the church, wasn't he? Amen. By the way, Satan does get in the church. That's right. Just so you remember that. Don't ever think, well, I'm in church, everything's fine. No, Satan does get in the church. Now, let's go to the, I just wanted to show you that. Now, back to Genesis. Back to Genesis. I just wanted to bring those up to you so you'll understand that the devil does uh, come into the congregation. And then the Bible says, uh, uh, in verse 1, And it came to pass that men began to multiply. Now, who was multiplying? Again, men, not angels. On the earth, and the daughters were born unto them, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took wives uh, of all they chose. Now, let's stop right here now for a minute. And I want you to go just to, just to show you something. Now, they, what did the angels do now? They're not angels. They're real people. But I want to just keep going to angels because that's what they say. 
So what did these angels do? They got married. Did they get married? That's what that says. If, if these are angels, these angels are getting married. All right, just for a minute, let's go over to Mark 12. Mark 12. The angels got married. All right, let's go to Mark 12. <coughs> now, I, I said I want to bring this slowly so that we have some kind of answers here when somebody uh, challenges us in these areas here, all right? Uh, verse 18. Hopefully that's what I want. Uh -oh. Wait a minute. Let me go to Mark. I went to Matthew. <laughs> Whatever. Nah. All right. All right. Now I'm, in, uh, now I'm in Mark 12, and I said verse 39, right? All right. Let me see if I find it here. I got the wrong scripture. I wrote down the wrong scripture. Uh, all right, stay right there. I'm going to try something here. Mark, I said Mark 12. All right, I'm just going to have to. I'm just going to have to give you, and then I'll have to give you the scripture some other time. But because I, I don't see it at all here. Maybe somebody could find it as I as I quote it here. Now remember that they took wives. The angels took wives. Do you remember when they when they said to Jesus the parable? of the guy, and there was a woman, and, and Moses said, if she marries a certain man, and he dies leaving her no children, she's to marry her brother to bring seed to the brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, we had a woman in town that married, I can't remember how many brothers, but seven. she married seven. seven brothers. She married all seven brothers. And at the end, she didn't have any children by none of them. So then they said, whose wife shall it be? Shall she be at the resurrection? <laughs> Jesus said, you do error not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. At the resurrection, you don't marry or give in, in marriage. Amen. But you shall be like the angels. Because right. they don't marry or are given in marriage. Right. So now we know they're not angels because these ones married. Amen? Amen. They married. Now, the reason I, that's important, remember, they did, created this race of ungodly people, and they created this race of giants, and these giants were starting to destroy the land, and God, deci and God decided to destroy them. Well, they were wicked. There's no getting around that. But the giants, now let's, let's read a little bit more. So, it says the wives, they took them wives, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, my spirit should not always strive with what? Men. Why? Because man is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. And if you read the story of Noah, you won't find any angels being destroyed in the story of Noah. Amen. I have to make it up to bring it in there. I have to read the book of Enoch or something to come, with that, come up with nonsense like that. But it's not in the Bible. Now, watch carefully what it says here in the next, in the next thought here, because I think, that, I, I think that it's important. He says this. He says, and there were giants in the earth in those days. And you notice he has that little commas there. It's to stop the statement. There were giants in those days. That's what it tells you. Now what's the next step? And there were giants in, the, in those days. He says, and also, and also after the giants were already there. And also after that the sons of God came into the daughters of men, uh, they bear children to them. The same, the, excuse me, the same came, uh, became mighty men. Now that word mighty doesn't mean big. It just simply means uh, men that had a lot of leadership. Amen. That's what it means, just men of a lot of leadership. Mighty men that were of old and renowned or very well known or famous. So the, the sons that came out of these uh, sons of God and, and, and out of the daughters of men were just simply mighty men or men that could move things around, men that got, uh, they were great leaders, but the problem was they were evil leaders. That was the problem. But the giants, if you'll notice, were already here. Amen. He says, and there were giants in the land in those days. That's what it says. 
Then after he says that the daughters, that the sons of man went to the daughters, went into the daughter, the sons of God went to the daughters of men. They just, then okay, then came what the giants? No, excuse me, the the evil people. The giants were already here. Now let me make a statement here. Uh, you'll hear somebody say, but you see the reason God destroyed the earth, He had to get rid of those giants. You got a problem. Because if you read your Bible, you're going to find that the giants were still in existence afterwards. Mm -hmm. Did not David kill one? Amen. What does the Bible call him? The Bible calls him a giant. Why? He was nine feet and a half, uh, nine, nine and a half feet tall. That's a pretty good sized giant. Amen. And then there was <laughs> Adolf, I'll call him, the king. His bed was 13 feet long. That's after the, that's after the flood. The giants came back. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's after the flood. Now, we can say, by the way, uh, the Bible gives, I think he's the tallest one, 13 feet. But he really doesn't say he was 13 feet. He says his bed was 13 feet. So he could have been 12 feet. Because you got to give yourself some room in that bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your feet can't hang over. Now, let's consider that even today, we can find uh, people that are probably a little taller than him. Not very much taller but no taller than 13 feet. Now, there's a lot of hoax going on. If you look at YouTube and all this, uh, that they found these bones and these big old heads that are real big, you'll see it. You know why it's not in the news? Because it's a hoax. Amen. It's not real. That's why you don't see uh, NBC or see uh, whatever newscast you like to do. That's why you don't see them out there. If they had found something that giant, I got news for you. They would be there. Amen. To film it. Amen. Uh, I mean, archaeologists would be right there to film it. I mean, that would be like, whoa, this is something different. This is crazy. That's kind of like if you really, uh, really killed a Bigfoot. Remember when the man claimed that he killed a Bigfoot? He brought it to a Fox News or whatever. And they were all excited because he was going to show them this thing. Of course, it was a fake, but he got his, he got his uh, time in the sun for a little bit. Now, I'm not saying Bigfoot don't exist. Because I think I should, no, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. So realize that, that, that it, uh, there are a, a bunch of hoax. The Loch Ness Monster is not real. I know it breaks your heart, but it's not. And they proved that everything that they had on them was fake. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we know that's not, that's not real. So let, let's, be care, let's be careful on that. So the sons of God were not, were not angels because under which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, never has. Amen. And we know, and we know that they were that the angels don't marry, so that couldn't have been angels because these angels marry, or these men or sons of God married. Amen. So we know it's not them also. Now the next thing I want you to notice that he brings up the word flesh. The angels are ministering spirits. Amen. Now did they ever appear like a man? Yes, they appear like a man, but they're not real men. They take the shape or the image of a man, but they're not real men. Do you remember in the book of in the, in the book of Genesis in the times of Lot, the two angels came into the, into the town, and the Bible says that the men of the city said, "Bring out those two men that are in there." Well, they appeared in the form of, of a man, but you notice they didn't go out and fist fight with them. They just went ahead and made them blind real quick, because they were angels. That's right. They were angels. They weren't. They weren't men like like you and I would be. They took upon themselves a form of, but they could not do everything that a man does. All right. Angels are a created being that does not reproduce. God already has his angels. Amen. Amen? Uh, otherwise, I guarantee we'd have a mess up in heaven. So let's let's, let's look at the name. And by the way, he said in, in heaven we're not going to marry either. That's right. So are we going to be uh, in heaven commit a bunch of adultery? No. There's no marriage. We don't, we don't need that anymore. Amen. Only when the earth was built did God say to the Adam and Eve, go and replenish the earth. Amen. Amen. Now, we, we won't have to worry about that. And that's why it's called heaven, because you won't be married. All right. Now, let's go to the next one. And then he goes on to say, then he, uh, then he goes on to say, if you would, that these mighty men had been, had been raised. But I want you to notice in verse 5, and God saw the wickedness of the angels. Is that what it says? No. No. God saw the wickedness of men. All right, the wickedness of men. Now, I, I like this because uh, it was men that was creating havoc on the earth. Now, do you realize that there's a, a, a teaching, and I'll give you the scripture in a minute, that says 
that before Adam and Eve, there was already an angelic world before this? That they roamed the earth? I mean, it's real popular. If you have a, a Schofield Bible, you find it in there. Schofield believed that. He taught that. Some independent Baptists used to believe that and taught that uh, Curtis Hudson was a very popular independent Baptist. Uh, uh, Lakin, I can't remember his first, first uh, initials. R.B. Lakin, I think, was his uh, initial. He believed in that. He believed that uh, before Adam and Eve, there was another world here on earth, and uh, it became darkened and ugly, and God had to destroy them and start again. Ain't that ridiculous? Mm -hmm. It's not in the Bible. That's right. But they teach that. All right? You know how they do it? Let's go, let's go if you would, in Genesis, no, excuse me, Job chapter 38. Job chapter 30. This is the scripture that they use, actually. And again, I, I tell you, these guys need to quit going to college and just read their Bible. Amen. They really, I, I hate to say it, but I mean, uh, so, so what he does here, now watch what he does here. Now all of a sudden he says in verse 4, if you're cha Job 38, verse 4, where was thou? Now he's challenging Job to give him answers, but he says this, where was thou when I laid the foundation now, that word foundation simply means to establish or to appoint uh, the earth, all right? The foundation of the earth, <clears throat> declare if thou hast understanding. Tell me, you're so smart, tell me how I did it. You've got to say in the joke. Mm -hmm. He said, you, you know everything, tell me how I did the foundation. He says, <clears throat> then he goes, he says, uh, uh, who laid the measure thereof? Well, the Lord did. <laughs> if thou knowest, he says, or who has stretched out the line upon it? He says, you know everything. Tell me how I formed everything. I put it down. The line, of course, you know, is the, the level and so on that they use. He said, whereupon are the, whereupon are the foundations uh, uh, thereof fastened? Tell me how everything is held up, if you know everything. He's asking Job, all right? Tell me where the columns are, are and, the build, and the buildings. Tell me where their strength is, how they're held up. Show me. Now, watch what he does. Watch what he does at the end here. He says, uh, Whereupon, uh, whereupon the foundations, uh, the foundations thereof are fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now look at the word cornerstone, because that's going that's the key to it, to this verse. Who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning star, when the morning star sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now let's stop right there. You know what they tell you? See, God's talking about creation, and when He started the creation. And the sons of God shouted for joy before God formed everything. So the sons of God have to be the angels. You got a problem though. Because notice how he breaks it down. Now watch this. Don't miss this because it's important. Watch how he breaks it down. He says here in verse, in verse uh, 7. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. Verse 6. He says, Whereupon are the foundations uh, 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 thereof fastened? Or, or, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now let me ask you a question. Those of you that know your Bible. Who's the cornerstone? Jesus. That's it. The cornerstone is your answer. Who laid the cornerstone thereof? He said thereof when the morning star sang. Uh, sang, by the way, they did in Luke chapter 1. They rejoice when uh, Jesus is born. He said, then the sons of God shouted for joy. They, when did they do it? When the cornerstone was laid. When Jesus came into the world. That's when they sang. Amen. That's when they rejoice. He's not talking about a world that before this world. Or he's not talking about the angels. Uh, he's not talking about uh, excuse me, the angels being here long before the earth was, was established. He's not talking about all that. He's talking about when the cornerstone was laid. Then they rejoiced. Amen. And, and then they had a good time. You see what happens is this. Instead of teaching you what the Bible teaches. They come up with doctrines that are not in there. Now let me show you how silly some of these doctrines are. When, when, when these uh, so-called angels, they're not angels, but I keep calling them that, they're real men, uh, godly men, men that used to serve God, but they turned to wickedness by going out with men that were not saved. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. And so because of that, a punishment came onto them. But let me continue there. Uh, when, 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 when all this takes place, then the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us that when this was taking place, all of a sudden God was not pleased with it anymore. Because they didn't care what God thought about it. Now, first of all, in your life, you better start caring what God thinks. 
Because God is not in a hurry to punish you. Amen. 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 Now, I'll give you a quick story, and then I'll continue here. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. Right? <coughs> oh, I'm going to have to come back. All right, let me just say this to you. Be careful that you don't think that God uh, doesn't see you. Repent of sin if you got it, and stay Amen. and stay right. repentant if you got, if you can. All right. Now notice what it says. <laughs> then, there were, then he goes on in verse in, in verse uh, uh, four. There were giants also <clears throat> in those days, and also after when the sons of God came in the daughters of men, uh, they bare children. Now this is what they created. They bare children. What kind of children did they bear? The same became mighty men of old, excuse me, mighty men which were of old, men of renown. That is very famous men, very, uh, very, if you would, uh, evil men, but they were leaders. Mighty men means that they were the leaders of the tribes or whatever you want to call it, all right? And God saw the wickedness of men, not angels, men. Right. So how did they come up with this? And all of a sudden, not only did they produce giants, and God destroyed the earth to try to get rid of the giants. Well, then God failed because the giants are still here. Amen. No, that's not what God was doing. God was destroying mankind to destroy them because of their, of their sin. But he, Noah found grace in his side and God started mankind again. But God didn't, didn't, didn't say, I'm going to destroy the giants. No, nothing in there says God was going to destroy the giants. That's right. That's what, we have to be, that's what we have to be careful with. Now, because of this, now let me hurry here because if you read uh, the book of uh, Enoch, you'll find some of this. I hope you don't read it because it's nothing but an ignorant book. But let me give you this. Because the, the angels, according to them, had, had made love to the women and the women produced children, not only did they have men like this, renowned and, and mighty men, but you know what they also teach you? That the rhino came out of that. And that some of their children were uh, four, 450 feet tall. Well, wouldn't you have to carry one like that before you, before you <laughs> have a big baby inside of you? Nine, nine, uh, 400, and that's as big as the ark. Mm -hmm. You understand that? That's as big as the ark. <clears throat> they believe that. And they teach that nonsense. And not only that, the giraffe, and what, what else? Uh, another one that they had in those days. Uh, the, the 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 dinosaur the leviathan came out of that the leviathan came out that those were produced because that those kind of creatures that are wicked and evil were created because of them having sex with angels that's the dumbest thing you ever heard amen there's no proof anywhere in scripture after this but if you read the book of Noah again read the rest of the story you're going to find that when God destroyed he only destroyed Mankind. Amen. He didn't destroy. He didn't destroy giants, and he didn't destroy weird people or angels or anything like. He didn't say that. Now I'm sure the giants drowned somewhere along the way. But anyway, uh, he didn't, didn't say that he destroyed the angels. Now let me let me uh, finish up. I guess we could finish up. I got about three minutes. Let me finish it up. So understand the angels here. Uh, excuse me. The sons of man here are not angels. They're nothing more than godly men who begin to turn on God and marry the unsaved. Amen? Amen. Marry the unsaved. You do not, uh, if you're going to serve the Lord, you do not marry unsaved people because you will end up paying for it. Mm -hmm. Amen? You marry someone that's not serving the Lord, somebody that's not a Christian, you're going to pay for it sooner or later. Amen. So you, you don't want to do that. Now, let, let me finish up by just giving you the last three thoughts, and that was simply, or the last thoughts here. Uh, uh, in verse 3, it was flesh. All right. In verse 12, it was flesh. In verse 13, the end of all flesh is come. Over and over and over, we're told that there were flesh. <clears throat> Nothing else. No angels. Yet they tell the story, man, and they add so much stuff into it that there is no, no scripture, if you would, uh, that they can give you for it, but they add so much into it that you say, wow, that sounds good. Remember that we are the sons of God. Amen. People that are saved, they are the sons of God. That's right. The angels are not the sons of God. They're the creation of God. They're the ministers. They're the, the if you would, the, those that minister to the Lord. They're the servants of God, like we are. And, and by the way, do you know that we are? The Bible says that we're going to command the angels at the end. Mm -hmm. So I mean, now how are we going to command them? I have no idea, but we're going to. Amen. And the Bible says that that one day we're going to rule over the angels. 
So let me just finish up real quick to say to you in this, in this scripture, and I hope you got something out of it, that there is no such thing as angels that came down and had sex with women. No such thing. Mm -hmm. And giants came out of it. You don't find that in the Bible at all. Every time you read, there's nothing but men. It's only flesh. And God, when God destroyed in the, in the book of Noah, you continue reading here, you'll find the story of Noah. Who died? Mankind. Mm -hmm. That's it. No angels, nor anything. But boy, it sounds good, doesn't it? Amen. Man, it sounds like a good story. Boy, they give you a good story. You go, wow, I didn't know the angels came down and did that. Yeah, they didn't. That's what you didn't know. They neither marry or given in marriage. All right? They neither marry or given in marriage. So they don't marry. Angels don't marry. They don't perform weddings. All right? We're going to have to stop here. It's already seven, 8 o'clock, and I know some of you are ready for bedtime, so let's stop right here. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here tonight. We ask, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would help us, dear God, as we study the scriptures. In Jesus' name.